Right, the government has given its approval to set aside 4 million tons of sugar as buffer stock for the coming season. Given the prevailing dry conditions in the sugarcane growing areas in the country, the fair and remunerated price per quintal has been retained at 275 rupees. But India is already sitting on a surplus sugar stock and neither exports nor domestic consumption is showing signs of taking off. And an important cog in the wheel is the sugar mills who are under pressure to clear dues to cane farmers. To get a check on all of this, let's speak to the Director General of the Indian Sugar Mills Association, Abhinash Varma. He's joining us right now on the show. Uh, Abhinash, thanks very much for taking out the time. I believe uh, you know the buffer has been increased from about 3 million tons to 4 million tons. And, and the, uh, the FRP of 275 rupees per quintal, that was something that the industry wanted to s retain at these levels, and that's happened. So that's a positive, right? Yeah, both are extremely positive and the, the, these would certainly help the sugar industry uh, perform much better in the coming season. Mm. Just uh, let's talk a little bit more about, you know, what's been happening with regards to the overall production right now. And if, if at all, uh, you know, uh, the, there's the stock that we're talking about, 4 million tons, the buffer stock, is enough or there should have been a little more, considering how the production is shaping up already. Yeah, I mean, uh, last two seasons, I mean, the current one and the previous seasons, we have seen record sugar production of around 32 and a half to 33 million tons. Because of, of that, the overhang for the next season, we'll be starting the next season as on 1st October 2019, with a very high surplus opening stocks of about 14.5 million tons, the highest ever. And that is the reason that the government of India decided to help the industry with some cash flows with the carrying cost of for about 4 million tons. Last year, the government has created about 3 million tons and they have increased it to 4 million tons for the next season. I think it is a very good move. 4 million tons is excellent. I mean, the industry would always love to have higher and higher quantities of buffer stocks, but the government has to take a, a, a reasonable kind of decision. And I think 4 million tons is a very reasonable number to start with. So in uh, keeping that in mind, uh, what do you expect to be the production for this entire season? And how much of it do you think is going to be the local demand? And is it going to be enough to cover that up or is it going to fall short? Yeah, so let me just take you through the statistics for the next season, which is starting on 1st October 2019. As correctly mentioned by you, there has been drought in uh, some parts of Maharashtra and northern part of Karnataka because of which the sugar cane availability from that part is going to be lower than what it has been in the current of the last year. Therefore, ISMA is expecting that the next year's sugar production should fall from 33 million tons from this year to about 28, 28.2 million tons next season, a fall of almost about 5 million tons. Now, as compared to the domestic requirement, this, will, this production will still be slightly higher by about a couple of million tons. The domestic requirement is about 26 million tons. So therefore, if you do a simple mathematical calculation, you would say that we will be adding to these stocks in the next season. Therefore, it is very important for us to export some of the surplus as well as try and divert some of the surplus sugar cane next season into ethanol production. We are in talks with the government. We have requested the government that whatever is WTO compatible, there are certain provisions under WTO rules which allow the Indian government to give subsidies, direct subsidies on export of agri products, including sugar. And therefore, the government, we have requested the government to come out with a scheme very quickly, probably in the next 15, 20 days, for the next season, an export policy along with a subsidy on the export for sugar for anywhere around 7 to 8 million tons. Even if we are able to do 5 to 6 million tons, the opening stocks of about 14.5 million tons will come down to below about 10 million tons in the next season, even though there is a slightly higher production in the next year. If we are able to divert some of the sugar cane also into ethanol, and because the capacities have increased quite significantly in the last 12 months or so, there will be higher diversion of sugar cane away from sugar into ethanol. So both these things put together, um, an export policy as well as the ethanol, uh, di uh, sugar cane diversion into ethanol, we are seeing that in the next season, we will be drawing down on our inventory and uh, the next season should be much, much better than what it has been in the current year. 
as well as in the previous season. All right. Does that help with regards to the outstanding cane arrears? I mean, that had spiked from 2016, closer to about 9,500. From there, it, in 2017, 2018, went up to 19,000. 2018, 2019, 30,000. With the measures that the government has been taking, do you see that number coming off meaningfully? Oh, yes, certainly. I mean, first of all, let's understand that the sugar cane purchases are about five to six months from November to around uh, end of April or so. And therefore, the cane price areas of the cane dues start building up during this period. But we start selling sugar. Uh, I mean, we, we continue to sell sugar uh, beyond that period. We, 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 we pay for the sugar cane in about five to six months. But we are selling our sugar in about 12, 14, 16 months, depending on the total inventory. And therefore, here on, from, a, a, uh, from May 2019 onwards, we are only selling sugar. And therefore, you are seeing that the cane price dues are coming down pretty fast. And I believe in the next about three to four months, uh, most of the cane price areas would get cleared, uh, except for some uh, sugar companies which are financially very distressed and not doing very well. Uh, on the other side is uh, the next year's production. Since the sugar cane purchases in the next season will be down by almost about 15-20% uh, because of lower sugar cane availability, uh, we will be mostly selling higher quantities of sugar into the in the next season as well as exporting around 6 to 7 million tons or 8 million tons of sugar in the next year. Plus the extra revenue that we get from making more ethanol than sugar. So all these three or four steps together should give us more cash flows, including the buffer stock subsidy, and that should help us pay better and more timely to the sugar cane farmers in the next season. Therefore, I very strongly believe that next year's cane price use which will be much more controlled than what we have seen in the current season or in the previous season. Thanks, Abhinash, for that. Really appreciate your time, and thanks for joining in today and giving us that perspective. That's the view Thank from you. Isma. Now, time now to hand over to Shefali, who's the MD and CEO of IDFC First Bank, Vivedanathan, to talk about the earnings. IDFC First Bank reported its first quarter earnings and they posted a loss of about 611 crore piece, mainly on the back of higher provisioning that the bank uh, made during the quarter. So Mr. Vedanathan is there with us uh, to analyze and help us understand uh, the numbers better. Uh, sir, so asset quality continues to be a pressure point mainly from the corporate book because of which you've made higher provisioning as well. So how long do we expect the pain to continue from the corporate book because that's clearly overshadowing all the positives you know that's the way Morgan Stanley is putting it that the asset quality pressure points are totally overshadowing all the positives uh, that are visible in your book First of all, there are uh, many positives in the book. I'm, I'm happy I alluded to it up front in terms of the growth of the loan book, uh, of the retail loan book, and growth of CASA and so on. We'll talk about that. But with regard to a specification on uh, provisions, uh, basically these are two identified accounts. We had last quarter itself disclosed that we had about 1,461 crores of uh, exposure to two accounts. Uh, one is, uh, you know, the large housing finance company, which is in the news, and the second is uh, basically Reliance Capital. And uh, on Reliance Capital, we had closed about 900 crores of exposure. Now, we think that for both these accounts, we have taken a provision of a 75 percent, and I genuinely believe that at 75 percent, uh, we are adequately provided on these two accounts, and we don't expect to take any more provisions on these two accounts, uh, at least in the near future, anytime in the next few quarters. Uh, and therefore, uh, we don't expect to take it, you know, we expect this uh, spate of provisions to ebb uh, from this quarter. Of course, retail-based normal loan loss provisions will continue every quarter. So that brings me to the next question about the retail segment. So the focus has been shifting there because if we go by the recent commentary from Mr. Um, from uh, HDFC Bank coming in that you know they have taken some prudent provisioning on the unsecured retail book and uh, that they are watchful of the segment going forward, especially considering the fact that we are seeing slowdown in as far as consumption is concerned, auto sector is concerned. Is there uh, an issue out there? Do we expect this to be a start of a retail NPA cycle? 
No, not at all. We don't expect that. There are a lot of things that are going right in India at this point of time because uh, collection capabilities have substantially improved because of the uh, analytics. The credit bureaus are working very well in India. So really there is no problem on that front and the early indicators are not uh, uh, for us uh, disclosing any problem at all on the retail front. Uh, in fact, now it's been eight, eight years at the stretch at Capital First that we built this book, uh, and now the book has crossed 40,000 crores, and um, it's, it's, it's rock stable uh, every quarter, even this quarter. In fact, this quarter we've taken additional effort of uh, even disclosing the retail NPAs, gross and net NPA, um, um, uh, just as a, good, as a good practice, and that number is also stable quarter on quarter. So let's break it segment wise. What kind of behavior are you seeing when it comes to uh, consumer lending? Are consumers postponing their purchases at the retail level? Also talk about the behavior in, in the urban and the rural markets. Yesterday a financier told me that in the rural segment, even though consumers are not adding new assets, but they are, re, uh, they, but they are making their repayments. So what is it that you are observing and how do you expect the trends to pan out going forward? See, uh, as you're very aware, uh, you, you've seen the numbers that are coming in FMCG, you've seen the numbers coming in consumption and uh, so on. So uh, it's all public news. As you can see, uh, uh, some of these numbers are quite uh, tepid and actually mixed because some companies are reporting good results up 10, 12 percent and some are reporting flat. But we uh, at, at our bank, uh, we are uh, starting off on a relatively small base. Uh, so we are not uh, really uh, players of the macro at this point of time because we are small uh, and we're just going at about 25 to 30 percent on the retail side. And that growth should continue uh, in this overall ecosystem. Okay. So, sir, you've reported a small inch up when it comes to the gross NPAs in the retail book at about 2.32% uh, versus 2.18%. Is there a guidance that you'd like to share with us about that? Yes. You know, if you see uh, an eight-year history of gain of capital, first, you know, one quarter, you know, up 10 basis points, another quarter down 10 basis points. The, the, these kind of movements uh, keep happening, but uh, but it's a it's a very uh, steady structure. If you see the net NP for the quarter, it actually come down by 10 basis points. So you could read the gross on the net, one is up, one is down. But let me just say that it's stable. Uh, if you are asked for guidance for the coming uh, uh, years, uh, we expect the retail to continue to behave well because all our internal indicators are showing are, are quite stable at this point of time. So what about the MSME segment? Uh, because there is risk aversion when it comes to lending by banks and the other um, and the NBFCs as well uh, when it comes to uh, lending to corporates which do not enjoy high ratings. So at MSMEs, um, the condition might be even worse. So recently, Sybil also warned of the asset quality issues uh, that could erupt in the segment. Uh, so what are your thoughts on the scene? Uh, again, uh, like I talked about consumption, I wanted to share with you our consumption book is about 16,000 crores. Uh, like that on the MSME side, uh, we have uh, our loan book is about uh, 8,000 8, crores. Um, like I said uh, to you, uh, the, there is uh, absolutely no problem at all uh, in the uh, return behavior of small entrepreneurs. These ticket sizes could be as low as maybe 50,000 rupees and may go up to as much as about maybe, you know, crore or two crores. Uh, in this segment, um, uh, absolutely, these are grassroots level uh, ecosystem. We are not seeing any problem at all there. In, if anything, there is a big opportunity there because uh, many state-owned banks are not very actively doing the business. Uh, I wish they did, but they're not. And uh, that uh, is giving an opportunity of growth of about 25% uh, year on year, um, even now. So talking about the corporate segment, uh, the growth to the industry segment actually uh, outpaced that of retail at the systemic level for the first time in a couple of years. And uh, the large industries uh, saw a lot of credit flowing in. Uh, I'm talking about the systemic level credit growth. So uh, what are your thoughts on the same? That And where would your focus be on? Even though you do tend to increase the retail book to about 70%, within corporates, where would you be focusing on? Um, you know, our uh, corporate book uh, as of now is about uh, 53,000 crores. Uh, we think they should come down uh, by the end of this financial year by 10,000 crores uh, and the retail book will go up by about uh, 
10,000 to 14,000 crores, 10 to 12,000 crores. So, uh, and uh, therefore, um, you know, our entire slack of uh, the, the wholesale book will be taken up by the uh, retail side. On the corporate side, we look for companies which have uh, stable cash flows, have good management, good promoters, and who have a good track record of honoring their, or, or honoring their, honoring their, their, their loans. So, really, uh, as far as our assurance to our investors and so on, is that uh, incrementally, since we have a good opportunity of lending in retail, uh, on the wholesale, we can afford to be very picky uh, in terms of our growth opportunities. All right, Mr. Vedinathan, uh, thank you so much for your time and uh, good luck with your plans ahead, sir. From one bank to another, syndicate banks' losses narrowed and asset quality remained stable in the June quarter. But uh, it is still a significant loss at about 980 crore rupees. Gross NPA is still above the 10% mark and provisioning went up more than two times. To help us understand the nature of these provisions and other factors at play, joining us on the show is the MD and CEO of Syndicate Bank, Mrithunjay Mahapatra. Sir, uh, hi. So basically, your loss has narrowed on a YY basis. So could you talk about about the factors that contributed to your earnings this time around? No, in fact, uh, if you see uh, on a uh, secular basis and uh, based on data, uh, it, is, it is not just narrowed down. Uh, we have uh, posted uh, this lowered amount of loss as compared to Q1 of last year, uh, despite providing substantially higher that is um, about three to 400 crore more uh, as compared to Q1 and about 1400, uh, 1300 crore more as compared to the uh, Q4 of last year. Uh, this is mainly triggered by robust uh, you know, NII growth, which uh, as you can see, it is 19% uh, more than last quarter. Uh, that is last uh, quarter one of last year, it has moved from 1506 crore to uh, 1792 crore and the operating profit has uh, grown by 45% from 558 crores to 810 crores uh, given by growth in uh, boost in uh, income uh, from uh, other incomes. So uh, overall, uh, although on a quarter on quarter basis, we have taken a hit because we wanted to come uh, down uh, below the 6% level of net NPA and we have aggressively provided. Otherwise, it has been a satisfactory performance. So your provisioning on a sequential basis is up substantially to about 2,000 crores versus 830 that you made uh, in Q4 of FI 19. But your gross NPAs haven't, uh, but your NPAs haven't moved much during the quarter. So is it some prudent provisioning that you have done in the quarter? Yeah. Uh, you you got it right. I think more of uh, prudential and aggressive provisioning that has contributed to this. There are some slippages in the uh, uh, in the corporate sector for which we have provided uh, additional, and also you know there is uh, some additional slippages in the MSME sector for which we have provided. We have taken the entire provision that is employee cost provision of around 160 crore that is required for uh, our employee share purchase scheme. The entire discount was to be uh, charged to PNL during this uh, year. So, um, but uh, additional provision we have made in uh, many loan accounts where uh, uh, we believe that uh, we should uh, be more uh, conservative than, uh, you know, aggressive about provisioning. So, uh, and our aim was to bring down the NPA from these uh, below the 6% level for which uh, we provided additionally and this has resulted in uh, sequential large jump in provisioning. So these accounts that you talked about for which you've made uh, some provisioning, uh, so would you like to name that for us, which are these accounts? Uh, the uh, there is the DAG group uh, provisioning uh, which is about 400 odd crores it has come in multiple sector it is in energy sector it is in uh, you know uh, nbfc sector also it is you know it is age related provisioning in some of their infra accounts uh, we have also you know made provisions in uh, some of the other accounts uh, in uh, various diverse sector 
but uh, uh, as i told you it is uh, you know aggressive provisioning which is uh, making the uh, impact on the total provision sir on account of these names that you just mentioned do we expect the provisioning to go up further in the quarters to come or you've taken the bulk of the hit in this quarter provision uh, i am expecting that uh, the provisioning pressure will come down only because in the first quarter as i told you uh, is uh, is a quarter where uh, the efforts are uh, generally at the beginning stage depending on whatever are our year end target we initiate different strategies and these strategies start uh, yielding results only from second quarter onwards so i believe that we will be able to contain our uh, slippages and provisioning requirement at the guidance level and uh, we we will start uh, uh, you know giving you better results from the uh, next quarter onwards so uh, would you be looking to raise any capital going forward considering that your cet1 is 8.85% uh, would you be needing more from the government or uh, would you be looking to raise some funds from the market see the growth capital uh, that is required uh, for us we have projected a growth of roughly around you know uh, uh, 40 50000 crores uh, uh, around 9% growth in uh, uh, advances total advances global advances growth which is around 20000 so 55000 is our total uh, growth in business of which around 25000 each will be in uh, deposits and advances and right now we have capital excess capital of around 1700 crore over regulatory minimum and based on the current risk weighted asset portion we can easily grow by 28000 crores and um, even if we go towards a little high yielding assets we will be able to grow between 20 to 25000 crores so uh, there is no pressure as such on uh, capital uh, for the growth requirement but we are expecting some capital also from the 70000 crore uh, capital outlay that uh, government has provided for psu banks uh, at the same time uh, we have also piled with sebi that we will go to the market for a 500 crore capital if necessary we will examine it on a uh, at this situation emerging basis uh, in the time to come so one last question how much is your retail book currently and do you see any asset quality issues there so currently my retail book is roughly around 38000 crores uh, which is uh, you know in a is around 19% of my total uh, 2 lakh 5000 crore of uh, total credit uh, book and um, going forward uh, i propose to grow there quite well so we are putting in place uh, risk management practices currently the npa is around 3% in uh, retail and housing loan npas are less and some of the other mortgage loan and other loan npas are little higher but uh, i don't see much pressure uh, going forward in the retail book Mr. Mahapatra, thank you so much uh, for helping us understand your Q1 earnings. And with that, it's a wrap in today's Indian Open. Up next is the FNO Show.